Um, but yeah, Napoleon Dynamite. It's it's number. It was rated number fourteen on Bravo's hundred fun, funniest movies. I'm just reading the Wikipedia here. I don't mm-hmm. care. Or I don't know. And I also didn't know that. But the movie is like it, it's taken on a life of its own. I remember mm-hmm. I. I didn't know what it was for the longest time. I think I didn't see it until like 2012 or something oh, wow. like that. I didn't see it for a long time. Yeah. And I just remember I was like watching it. I think I think my old next door neighbor Fred showed it to me. It was mm-hmm. like he watched it. He thought it was funny. And then and I was like, this is like I went over to his house to watch it. And I was like, this is stupid. And he was like, isn't it funny? And like I didn't understand it. I like the only yeah. thing that I liked was the dance scene because it was just goofy. But yeah. otherwise, I didn't see the point in it. And like, but I, I I remember going into Hot Topic and seeing the Vote for Pedro certs, and mm-hmm. I thought Vote for Pedro was like a pop punk band, which <laughs> it it sounds like a pop punk band. It probably was a pop punk band at some point. I'm, I'm sure. sure. I'm sure somebody tried it, like a pop punk band or like a ska yeah. band or something. I'm yeah. sure they tried to be both. To, I'm sure they tried to use the name "Vote for Pedro." Yeah. Um, but like, there's like, I having watched it again. Like, I ended up watching it yesterday. I didn't. I don't dislike it as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. Like, like I said, I pop for a couple of things, and I could understand why people find it funny but like i still don't see why it's become why it made all this money or why it's become such a big hit yeah i it i think it was like one of those things where i don't even think the the director like thought it was gonna like blow up like it did i think he figured oh, okay i'll probably get some you know i'll probably get some notoriety from like sundance and you know some independent film festivals and get maybe like a limited run in theaters and then like it became like this like huge box office smash like out of nowhere yeah um and i i guess it was just the the right time for it you know it was I mean, post 9 11 it won a bunch of awards too but yes post 9 11 like people it was like a weird time for comedy like people were like kind of like what you know where do we go like 9 11 kind of like fundamentally changed our culture a lot and like i think we were still kind of like in it was only a few years later we're still kind of reeling we don't know what like direction the culture's in plus it's the turn of a new century the turn of a new decade you know things always change like right in the middle of the decade is when we start getting into like the aesthetic of that decade so that was like really when the 2000s started to become more like the primary you know cultural kind of like influence was like right there in in the middle of, of the 2000s um you know, and I guess, like I said, it was it was our generation's clerks almost. It was like it was the perfect time because like millennials were all in high school, so we like could relate to the characters because we're all in high school basically. Mm-hmm. And all with our individual, you know, young, you know the older millennials were in their younger twenties, and the the youngest millennials were like just starting to get into like high school and maybe in middle school still. You know, mm-hmm. so it was kind of like more relatable to to our generation, and um, you know, it was just uh, millennials are you know, technically one of the larger generations. So it just worked because, you know, we, we were like a huge generation and it was, it appealed to us, you know, I think it really, you had to see it when it came out to like really appreciate it for what it was, you know, what you're watching it years later, I think it, it's harder to kind of appreciate the humor. Cause again, it was, that was like the early two thousands. Like, so it, I could see why watching it in 2012, you, you didn't like it because, it's like the humor was you don't relate to the humor as much because you know it was your eight years or whatever at high school or you know however many years at a high school at that point so it's like well it's kind of silly you know yeah it's it's that could be why i mean also i don't know if myself at the time would have even liked it because everything that i everything that i watched or mm-hmm. that i listened to it was all like it was all like I was into a lot of stuff that was a lot older than I was. So like mm-hmm. and anything anything that was current at the time, a lot of it I just did not like in general. Yeah. So like I so think that could be like a in two thousand like in two thousand four two thousand five like I was watching I was trying to watch every Monty Python thing that ever came out. 
Yeah. Um, I only li- like I, I I was very close minded. I I only listened to like eighties thrash metal and nineties death metal. I wouldn't give anything mm-hmm. else a chance. Mm-hmm. Um, I like. I, I hated uh, I hated everything that wasn't metal specifically because it wasn't metal. Here I am now, yeah. you know, years later, and I love gangster rap just as much as I love metal. But I also love I also love smooth jazz and I also love blues. Mm-hmm. And once in a while, I don't I don't mind putting on some bluegrass or mm-hmm. you know. And I have a guilty pleasure for you know pop every once in a while too. Yeah. So yeah. like everything is just kind of you know. I'm a very dis- I'm a very different person now than I was then. Yeah. And I think that's why I can understand it a little bit better now, but at the time yeah. and even when I wa- first watched it, I really like that mindset just wasn't really there. I wasn't as open and I didn't really understand why people would like it. Mhm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where Again, I think you kind of had to, like, be there, quote-unquote, you know, like, you really had to, like, it, it was it was more kind of, like, in the moment, kind of, like, when you saw it, when it first came out, it was, like, okay, like, and then now going back, obviously, like, I watch it for, like, nostalgic purposes, purposes obviously, because that was, like, you know, I, I, lo- I liked it back when I first saw it when I was 14, so I'll watch it again and still and still laugh at it today because, you know, I liked it then. Yeah, I mean, um, when I watched it yesterday, um, like, at first, I still thought that it was pretty stupid for about mm-hmm. the first, I would say about the first act. I really, like, I thought about just changing the channel or, like, not, or, like, just watching it, like, you know, or tomorrow and just kind of delaying it, and just, like, putting on something else. Mm-hmm. But, I, but, like, as I got further into the second act, it started to grow on me a little more and I started to really, like, understand why people tend to like it yeah so I, I i will say that it the movie itself it does slowly grow on you it, it does slowly grow on you as you're introduced to more characters um it's like to me i think the length is just what kind of like doesn't do it for me i think i i think it just drags at times mm-hmm. just because there's so much nothing that happens yeah. Like and it's, well, it's not it's not like... the dialogue that drives it. It's there's there's not really anything specifically driving it or like anything specifically yeah. except for I know the dance happens at the end, so am I so like am I watching it for the dance or uh, like what am I like I'm not sure what I'm watching it for. Uh, and like yeah. I I I actually liked watching Kip's transformation how he's like kind of a pushover yeah. and then like at the end, he ends up, you know, he ends up leaving and, like, changing mm-hmm. his image and everything, you know, with his girlfriend LaFonda. And yeah. he, you know, he he moves to Detroit with her. Mm-hmm. So, like, he ends, like, his arc is huge. I mean, Napoleon does really have well, a, a big change, too, because he, he kind of too. becomes more confident. He does. He does. And he ends up, like having friends which i don't know if he it doesn't seem like he really has any friends at the beginning of the movie no not really and then towards the end he has two friends one of whom is possibly you know a future love interest or not love Mm -hmm. or like a good friend um uncle rico just it's it kind of just he ends up kind of declining a little bit like you kind of root for him, and he you you kind of root for Uncle Rico, and you kind of want him to like you know get his head out of the sand, but mm-hmm. like it doesn't seem like any of his ideas work. Like he like no, because like at the beginning it seemed like for the um for the Tupperware he throws in the plastic sailboat, yeah, and we never see him <laughs> do that ever again. And the other and no. like the customer ends up wanting to buy the Tupperware because he wants the sailboat. Right. But we, but when he's introducing it to other people, he doesn't have a sailboat with him. So was that his sailboat that he just like gave to the guy or. It probably was. It he probably, just probably was. 
<laughs> just selling stuff out of his own van, his own collection. <laughs> yeah, he probably just wanted it, and that's probably whatever's left. So he, he probably said, I need to make a sale, I need to make money, so I'm doing this. So I'll mm-hmm. just throw in the sailboat, even though this sailboat probably cost him, you know, way more than 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 whatever he just made on it but he needed to make uh-huh. he needed to make money so that he could like either prove it to himself or prove it to napoleon or whoever that he could actually think, like do it yeah and then I, I think he was really he wanted to try to win back his wife or girlfriend or whatever and she does end up returning to him after he like gets beat up by rex you know and he's kind of like is that his girlfriend and, or ex-wife uh, yeah, I think that's supposed to be his wife or his girlfriend or whatever. Oh, I thought and, it was um, just like some girl who like comes down the road and she like she sees what he's doing and she's curious. No, I think that was actually supposed to be his wife like returning. Like maybe she heard that he got like beat up and like was kind of like, you know, living now like he kind of got a little taste of like, you know, humble pie a little bit and was like, you know, just – he he couldn't throw anymore. Like his that was his ar- his throwing arm, so he couldn't really throw footballs anymore. Mm-hmm. And then she kind of like goes back. I guess feels bad for him. Wants to like go back to him. You know. So okay. Well, I mean, he has he has the shift when when Napoleon puts on the 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 fake time machine thing that he buys from wherever he bought it from. Yeah. Like he bought like he buys this like contraption that like fries his brain and like his nuts or something. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and, you know, he calls it a time machine. Kip's like, oh, it's a time machine. And like John and, and like, um, like Napoleon Dynamite tries on and he's, and like, you see that it's set to, um, 1982, which is, you know, the year of whatever football game that he's talking about that, you know, mm-hmm. supposedly ruined his life. Yeah. And he puts the thing on and like it, it electrocutes him basically. <laughs> Yeah. And he like he makes him turn it off, and he like throws it, and and like Napoleon's like, it doesn't work. Nothing happened. It didn't work. Yeah. And then like you see Uncle Rico in the back, and he's like, Yeah, I know it doesn't work. Yeah, I could have told you that. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, but but like you know, he made the purchase, so it's almost oh, like yeah. that. It's almost like that's like his awakening, kind of, but not mm-hmm. really. I don't like, like, or at least he starts to like. You know, maybe that's where he like starts to come to grips with things. Well, I think also when you he know, still Napoleon, tries like... to throw the football on the camera, and but it's I it think, seems I... like he's just doing it to get it out. I think when Napoleon too, like Napoleon throws the tomatoes at his van when he like you know pit, like pisses off like uh, the the one girl that Napoleon's like hanging out with. I forget her name now. Um, uh, Deb. Yeah, Deb. He like tries to sell her the friggin' like boot, like the breast enhancing oh my God, yeah. I drugs, that right? And then other like thing is she gets like, all mad. Boss, boss thing. <laughs> and um, and then like so like he kind of like tackles Napoleon. And is like you're gonna clean my van. Like he's like you know kind of like trying to like be like this like big tough guy. And then Napoleon just like kind of like elbows him and runs away. Yeah. And I think that kind of like really showed that like you know he was like washed up. Like he can't even like. He can't even chase down his his nephew, who's like a teenager, you know. Like, yeah. And well, grandma, we don't, well, grandma, we don't really know if she has an arc. Grandma just goes. Grandma does crazy things. She goes to the hospital for him, and <laughs> she probably went right back to doing it the next day because she's a tough old lady. Yeah. Um, Deb. Deb is interesting because she's you know she's a little unsure of herself, but she's like. <laughs> Is very she has a lot of skills and she's really smart. Yeah. Like she yeah, might I be mean, a little she might be a little goofy and a little awkward, but she's like a really smart cookie. Mm-hmm. And then Pedro, of course, you know he. Well, Pedro you know, is pretty has awesome. A, a great arc where you know he kind of comes in as like this exchange. Well, not I guess he's not an exchange. He's student. like the he's new just, kid. He's the new kid. You know, and he's in a predominantly white town because it's friggin' rural Idaho and he's yeah. like from Mexico. So, and he kind of like comes out of his shell and like, and ends up becoming the class president, which is pretty, you know, this, the new kid who's never, doesn't really know anybody at the school just because, you know, Napoleon like really helped him uh, and, you know, really got out there. And, well, and, and Deb helps too because she gives them, and Deb, yeah. she gives them the, uh, the beads to just give to everybody. Yeah, yeah, and 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 his his uh, his cousin with the low rider when they like 
the the one bully is like beating up the kid. His cousin to steal with the low. His cousin with the low rider. Um, and uh, is he was like one of the dudes on. He was like one of the Mexican twins on um on Breaking Bad. Who's oh really? Yeah, and like those guys, you do not want to mess with them. I forgot what they're. Yeah. I forgot what they call them in there, but they're like mm-hmm. they're they're like something like the they're. They're the they're the something bad is gonna happen to you brothers basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like whenever they well, like, sh- like whenever they show up, they just murder people. Um, but one of my favorite scenes is when he like the, so the the kid's getting his bike stolen by. Well, first he's like getting beat up in the hallway. So like Napoleon kind of goes up to him and is like, you know, Pedro will offer you his protection or whatever. And then like the the bully comes back and tries to steal the kid's bike and like they just drive up in the low rider and pull up and the the guy the Pedro's cousin is just like just shakes his head and the guy <laughs> like just runs away. Yeah, I pop for that and yeah. um and and the low rider says vote for Pedro on it too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I also like when like when he shows up to um when he shows up to uh to to the girl that he asks out to the dance. Mm-hmm in the low rider with the cousins. And it's the first time that yeah. we even see the cousins and yeah. like, we don't even know if they're really related to him or anything. He just like makes that assumption because they're the only other Mexican guys. Yeah. And you're <laughs> just like, Oh no, this poor, this poor boy is going to die. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to end up in a ditch somewhere. And it turns out that they actually are his cousins. Yeah. <laughs> the, and the friend, the dad is like, what's that on my driveway? It's my ride. <laughs> like, yeah. They like do the hydraulics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I pop for that too. Like I said, there's things where there's instances where I where where I saw why it could be funny and why and mm-hmm. like why people would love this movie, but mm-hmm. I like it. It just it's just not it's not anything I would really go out of my way for other than something like this. 